Hey everybody, James Canal here, Mogul Realty Group. It is March 13th, that's Friday. I wanted to give an update on the status of the industry with coronavirus. Now things could change, but this is what we're doing right now. Everything I'm about to talk about applies not only, only to clients and people who are interested in the industry as a consumer, but it also applies to my fellow realtors. So this is gonna be important for all of us to take a look at. I'm gonna be glancing down because I took a few notes. Now, we know there's a lot of bad news out there. For example, Iran and Italy are getting slammed. They are examples of what happens when a medical system gets overloaded. And this is exactly what we want to avoid. We want to avoid everybody getting sick all at once so that people who need care can't get it. Um, we know that there's a potential for an exponential spread of this virus, which means two turns into four, turns into eight, turns into 16, and then all of a sudden one million turns into two million, turns into four million. Um, we know that it's just absolutely critical to slow that growth rate because we don't want to overtax systems. It looks like a lot of people are going to get sick, but if everybody is sick, everybody just takes their darn turn being sick, it's going to be okay because the people who are in need of that critical medical help can get it. We're talking, you know, people with respiratory issues, the elderly and whatnot. There is a lot of good news coming out too, and this is giving me a lot of hope. It's giving me a lot of optimism. For example, I've been keeping a really close eye on the media. It looks like China, Canada, and Israel are all working on vaccines and are claiming to have something ready by April. Um, Taiwan, an isolated island with 25 million people on a tiny little island, has one of the slowest spreads of the disease um, from what I read yesterday because they are being very proactive, very aggressive with their public health measures. Um, we know that there's a patient from the Diamond, which was one of the cruise ships that was quarantined. I saw him post a video explaining what having the disease felt like and what his recovery has been like. So that's, that's pretty exciting because we know kind of what the symptoms for an average person are going to look like. And, you know, congratulations to him on a healthy recovery. I read that, you know, China's recovery rate is up and infection rate is down. Now, by the time you watch that video, this could change. But for now, that's a good news story. Let's talk about the reactions that we're seeing because a few of the reactions have seemed very intense. For example, sports, all of them canceled. Well, postponed. And I'm hoping postponed because I wanna watch LeBron take home the ring. Next, we know that um, all large gatherings, we're talking conferences, concerts, meetups, meetings, those are being canceled. Alberta has enacted a policy where any gathering over 250 people, not allowed for now. And we're noticing uh, new hygiene habits, you know, people are not shaking hands, people aren't even pounding it, people are staying, you know, a little bit further apart when they're having conversations, uh, people are having creative ways of greeting each other, tapping feet, stuff like that. Um, you know, we've seen people wrap their dogs up in plastic outfits to take them out for walks. So we know that hygiene is, uh, is really important, being proactive with it is important. So I guess in summary, we don't really know how severe this is going to get for us in North America and in Canada. We know how bad it could get by seeing examples of other countries who let this get away from them. And we want to make sure that we're not in a situation where that's happening to us. We don't want to overtax the system. We don't want the vulnerable people to not get the critical care that they need. So again, from my perspective, my observation is there's three main strategies that have been suggested. Number one, self-quarantine. And this applies to everybody watching. If you are feeling even just a little bit sick, you have symptoms, or you've interacted with somebody that does have cis symptoms, talk to your boss, work from home, just self-quarantine for a little bit until you can verify whether or not you have it. Number two, social distancing. This is a strategy that we're seeing with people canceling sporting events, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, limiting the amount of interaction where a whole bunch of people get all together at once. Because if we get a whole bunch of people all together at once, that's when things really start accelerating. And then number three, proactive hygiene. So this is what we're seeing with wash your darn hands all the time, get your hand sanitizer out. Um, something that I've been noticing people doing that I think is really smart is, you know, if, if you go to a restaurant, people are pulling out little packages of Lysol wipes, wiping down the menu, wiping down their chair, wiping down the spot in front of them, just creating a disinfected zone for themselves. So let's switch this conversation to real estate and what real estate strategies are. So I'm going to give everybody a serious reality check. Real estate is not going to stop. It's not going to slow down. We are heading into the busiest season in real estate in Edmonton and in Canada. And there are a lot of people who want to buy. There are a lot of people who are excited about selling. And there are a lot of realtors who are very keen on doing business in this busy time of year. In conjunction with that, because of the global economic um, after effects of this virus, 
interest rates are the lowest they've been in like a long time. So there are very huge economic incentives to be doing real estate business right now. And the fact of the matter is, speaking on behalf of all real estate agents, we're hustlers. We want to do that business. A real estate agent doesn't want to sit around at home doing nothing. We're all very professional. We're all very enthusiastic. We all really like doing business. So business is going to happen. So knowing that, this is what my messaging is to the consumers and to my fellow realtors on how we can use those three strategies of self-quarantine, social distancing, and proactive hygiene to do business in a time where public health is the number one concern. So again, number one, if you think you need to self-quarantine, do. Here's the beautiful thing about the real estate industry. And I can speak to this because more than half of our clients are actually from Vancouver who do business in Edmonton is we have a ton of technology available to do most of our real estate activities without actually having to be physically present in person. So I'm going to go through a few scenarios and just provide a few suggestions on how to react to those scenarios. So number one, meeting a new client. In my opinion, this can be done using a video conference application like Zoom. We can have a video meeting, just like you're seeing me on a screen. We can be on the other side of the screen interacting. We can use our laptops to do a screen share to show critical documents. We can open up a map and talk about the city, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say that for those new client interactions, um, you know, let's, let's talk about using technology. Um, even for a listing appointment, uh, we can use this video feature to look at the client's house, get to see what's going on in there and create a strategy that, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a couple weeks, uh, maybe it's a month before it's a little more reasonable to start going out and about. Um, we can at least get the process started so that business doesn't grind to a halt. Number two, showings. So people want to see houses. Now, I think the first and most important thing to note is we need to respect owners who are on self-quarantine. We need to respect clients who are on self-quarantine. If the house is just not available to show in person, it's okay. Don't do it. We've got a couple of weeks. But use technology. So realtors, all listing agents, what I would suggest now, um, while there's still a little bit of time, if it's if it's safe to do so, go to the property, get a virtual tour done. You know, we have iGuide, we have Matterport, take a ton of video of that house. So there's content available so that people that want to see that house can use the technology to view it. Number two, if, <clears throat> if it is still available for a showing, then practice proactive hygiene techniques. So realtors, make sure that in your cars, you've got a big old tub of those Lysol wipes, you've got hand sanitizer. And when you get to the property, start um, disinfecting protocols, you know, wipe down the door handle, wipe down the lockbox. Um, when you open the door handle, you know, wipe down anything your client might be touching, make sure that your clients have hand sanitized before they go into the property and then just give them friendly reminders and clients, this goes for you. Just don't touch stuff. I know when we're doing showings, we want to, we want to open the drawers, open the cabinets, open the closets, have a Lysol wipe in hand, hold what you're going to open and then open it. Um, you know, these hygiene protocols are going to be important for in-person interactions. So I think, you know, use technology to create an experience where people can interact with the property. And if you happen to be in person in a property, as long as there's no self-quarantine involved, make sure that you're practicing aggressive disinfecting hygiene habits while you're there. Number three, home inspections. This one's a tricky one because it's the one that really does need to happen in person. So again, going to self-quarantine and respecting that. If that's the situation, then please, Everybody in the industry, let's get along. If we need to extend that inspection condition by a week or two because we need time to do the inspection because of health concerns, let's all be, let's all be reasonable with each other and grant these inspections. Now, again, if it does make sense to do the inspection in person, then <clears throat> I'm going to relate, relate back to our hygiene protocols, which is disinfecting everything that needs to be touched, making sure that you're practicing social distancing, so don't get face-to-face -face with the home inspector, give everybody a little bit of space, and, um, you know, let's just be reasonable about it. Next, open houses. My personal opinion, this whole video is my personal opinion, by the way, is um, if you can avoid doing an open house, do it. But if it's absolutely essential to do an open house, again, assuming there's no self-quarantine, I would recommend A, practicing social distancing. So instead of getting, you know, if you're having one of those open houses where everybody's going to show up, um, don't let 40 people in an open house at once. Create a queue. Make sure that that queue space everybody out in line so that people aren't, you know, too close to each other and breathing on each other and then practice safe hygiene habits. Everybody's disinfecting before they go in. 
maybe you've got face masks available for people that are going in. Again, Lysol wipe down stuff that people are touching. And then, you know, it's going to slow down the pace of your open house, but at least it's going to keep it healthy. It's going to keep it safe. Uh, finally, events. So we do an event called Mogul Mastermind. It's a meetup. It's for investors. It's, you know, it's great. We talk about investing. We have speakers. Now, in, in alignment with the practice of social distancing, we are not going to have this event in person. And if you are going to do an event, probably shouldn't do it in person for now. But we've got the technology to have these meetups. Again, I want to just, I want to just say something here. Social distancing doesn't mean social isolation. I know I'm seeing all these memes about how it's like, yay, it's time to be an introvert. But if you're not an introvert and you want to interact with people, let's just use the technology. We've got an enterprise Zoom account, which means we can have hundreds of people on a Zoom call. Um, we're going to be having our meeting using this technology. There's a chat feed, so there's still going to be networking involved. Is it, as, you know, is it going to be the same as an in-person meeting? No, but it's a suitable replacement considering the circumstances we're working with. So in conclusion, Real estate industry, we can make it through this, but we have to be smart about it. Remember, we've got self-quarantine. We've got to respect self-quarantine. You've got to be proactive about self-quarantining yourself. Use the technology available to take in-person experiences and turning them into virtual experiences. Make sure we're practicing good hygiene habits and make sure we're practicing social distancing.